Good morning, and welcome back to Kevin Toll Reads. Today I have a book review of Even the Wicked by Lawrence Block. This was published in 1996 and is book 13 in the Matthew Scudder series. The summary of this book really is regarding a vigilante who goes by the name of Will as he writes these letters to the paper about, you know, will of the people and condemns these murderers, people that help murderers, like attorneys, and says they're above the law and that justice needs to be served. So he acts kind of like in a vigilante type role. And he's been basically a serial killer in New York. And so Scudder gets involved in the sense that a local attorney named Adrian hires him because he knows he's in, he's on the list. And he is representation of some shady people has made him a target. And he hires Scudder to investigate the series, even though Scudder's reluctant. He also wants to hire Matt to, as personal protection, but Matt associate, uh, denies that request or sends him and, and gives him recommendations to some other groups. And so the the premise that's kind of the major premise. There is a sub kind of plot in the sense that a former friend from AA has a friend that was murdered. Well, they believe was murdered. He had AIDS. Now the insurance, life insurance doesn't want to pay because of that. And so that was kind of a subplot that Matt has to kind of work through. So that's kind of the premise of the story. So what I like about this book, and obviously we're going to get into maybe some spoiler content here. I like TJ. TJ plays a huge role here. And I, I was really happy about that. I really think that carried... A lot of the score. I think TJ and the conclusion of the story is the reason why I ended up at the score I ended up and we'll get into that obviously. I really found TJ's character very good. I like the fact that he played a more central role. We get to see more personality development out of TJ, not just, you know, his jive talking and his funny conversations, but we get to see, you know, some emotion and I thought that was really cool. Elaine is definitely mentioned in the book. They're obviously still together. She's still employed TJ to help out our studio. They have a, there's definitely a relationship there beyond just, you know, uh, employer and employee um, in the sense that, you know, they're friends and she's, you know, kind of looking after him, so to speak, but she doesn't really play much more than a sounding board kind of role with Matt in the story. <clears throat> um, I also felt like I, I felt, I found and liked the, it was interesting that Hardway Ray was mentioned in this book. Scudder goes to him and gets some advice a little bit. I, he was from a previous book. He's a defense attorney. And so I thought his his conversation was interesting. A lot like Mickey Ballou. It's an interesting conversation, which helps push the plot along. Speaking of Mickey Ballou, he, I believe there was only one section in here where there was a conversation. <clears throat> it didn't really amount to anything. It's not like the normal normal pace of the book where there's multiple conversations with the Mickey or he goes and does things. I know at the end they kept, they caught a game, a basketball game, and we'll talk about the conclusion in, in a little bit. I, I really liked the conclusion. The conclusion, again, is what carried it. TJ and the conclusion are what carried this sto story for me. If it wouldn't have been for those two things, this would really have fell flatter than what it did. So let's talk about what I disliked. And I really, I got some notes down here that I keep glancing at because I've got some thoughts and I really want to unpack this for you all. Let me premise before I get into the dislikes. I enjoy the Scudder series. I've got like four and maybe a novella left in this series. It's one of my long-term reading goals. I haven't enjoyed it immensely. I like Lawrence Block's writing. With that being said, any long-term series is going to have books that you don't like. Uh, that maybe are more vanilla and maybe fall flat. This is definitely one of them. So I want to preface that before I go into some of these dislikes. You know, he doesn't, Scudder really doesn't seem to care in this story. It, I was really expecting more, I don't know, emotion. I don't know if it's just because Block is being cognizant of the fact that Scudder's getting up there in age as a PI. You know, maybe he's getting more established with his life in the lane and he's wanting to take less risk and chance. But this was really kind of vanilla from Matthew Scudder's sense of urgency, sense of, you know, alarm. It was really, he was really kind of soft-handed. 
And so that I disliked. I was wanting to see a little more hardness, a little more edge to him. So I also think there was an overuse of AA and sobriety in. I, it, it, it wasn't punched. I wasn't punched in the face by it, but I, I'm just getting tired of it, I guess, is where I'm kind of at, I'm at. I get it. You know, it's something that people struggle with all the time. So it definitely personalizes the story for Scudder. And he's always going to be battling these demons, so to speak. But maybe a little more soft-handed on some of it. Maybe. The killer's pretty obvious, in my opinion. I, I, I you know, halfway through the book, I had it kind of nailed down. And so it, there was not a lot of, the mystery kind of fell flat for me. Um, he worked these multiple murders. Again, he worked this one for a friend from A, and the person had AIDS. The, the gentleman had AIDS and died. And that one kind of just went nowhere. It was kind of just like, it, it kind of seemed to me that Block needed a little more meat into this. And this is a longer book for Block in terms of page count. This is like 360 some pages. So this is a bigger book in the, in the series. And so that really was unnecessary. I would have liked a singular focus on the one murder. Honestly, I didn't think that was needed. Um, in terms of, you know, Mickey Ballou, it, th there wasn't much to that story. I, I dislike that. I was wanting a little more from there. So in conclusion, though, in conclusion, score-wise, I give this a 3-0 out of 5. Now, with that being said, the reason I give it a 3-0 is because of TJ and the conclusion. I talked a little bit about TJ. I definitely liked his central role and all that. And we get to see some personality development. We really get to see it in the conclusion. So with this job and the money that he gets from the job, the, the two murder missed jobs he does, at the end of the story, it's Christmas time, he goes out and buys Elaine a nice gift, and he buys TJ a nice gift. Not only does he buy TJ a nice gift, he gives TJ this com a computer, and not only a computer, but he gives him his old room at the hotel, and TJ gets real emotional, and we get to see a side of TJ we haven't seen. It was a real kind of ribbon bow type wrapping up of the story. And honestly, it kind of it really made me kind of appreciate TJ a little more. I mean, how appreciative he was of that, you know, and... I thought that was really good because at the beginning of the book, TJ is talking about, you know, you need a computer. Why don't you have a computer? And Matt's like really reluctant. He's like, I don't want anything to do with that. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, I can get so much more done for you if I, you know, you got a computer and I could use it. And just like he mentions the Kongs, you know, from free previous books and how they were computer hackers and the, the telephone network and all that. And so it was nice that he, uh, he, I, and I, as, as it was uncovering this, conclusion I knew it was like okay he got him a computer and he's like I got you this Mac computer but then he's like and I figured I'd keep it over here because I want you to have this apartment or this hotel room and I'm going to continue to pay for even though I'm living with the lane but it's close and you know I thought it was great so I really enjoyed that so those TJ's personality and, and evolution and the conclusion of the book really are the things that gave us a 3-0. If it wouldn't have been for the conclusion, this would have been the twos. It really, it, it, overall, I think it's an okay book. It's borderline below average, but the conclusion kind of kept it as average. Again, I understand when you have a character and you're trying to write mysteries and everything else... You're going to have a book or two. It's going to be kind of vanilla. We get it a little bit with the Sanford and the Davenport series here and there, but they're still good. They're still enjoyable. And this was enjoyable as well. But that's my review. Lawrence Block, Even the Wicked, book 13 in the Matthew Scudder series. I gave this a 3.0 out of 5. And those are my thoughts. I hope you're having a great day. If you have read Lawrence Block, if you have any suggestions out there of things that I might also enjoy, please drop me a comment. I'm always interested in what you all are reading and what you're all what your thoughts are and maybe if you all have books that I may be of interest to me. So I hope you're having a great Thursday and wrapping your week up strong and I will talk to you later. Thanks.